Well, welcome everyone to the November Submissions Working Group meeting. So let's begin. And I guess um, there's been a lot of correspondence. So who would like to sum that up? Um, Eric or Ning, do you, do you know the status of where we are in response to Paul's requests? So I have uh, been looking at that a little bit. Admittedly, I was a little late looking at it. I just finished the uh, Shiny in production workshop I gave at our pharma yesterday. So I'm catching up on the, the chain here, but it looks like the comments and Paul, you can correct me if I don't understand this correctly. It looks like there's a couple of minor ones with labeling. Um, looks like one of the tables had a reverse label um looking like you'd like to see an additional table um as well and sounds like something with decimal places um so they all seem fairly minor just need to address mm -hmm. them but um it sounds like at the at the minimum um it's it's looking good from your side over in those comments right yes okay so the and, um mm -hmm. primary table had the um header labels for high and low dose reversed. Okay. Okay, we will uh, fix that for sure. Um, sounds like it may have been, when we put that code in to generate the tables, that was like at the very early stages of the project. So it's possible that it just didn't get updated when um, that was brought up in pilot one as well. Um, okay. Now, forgive me if this is in the chain and I missed it, but did did you all test like the deployment instructions when you reviewed the app or are you reviewing the app that was extra? Um, I was looking at reviewing the app that was posted on the RStudio server. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we, ha I had not, I'll be honest and say, I had not tried it out yet. Um, okay. I was, uh, Providing feedback on on the basis of what I saw there. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. Um, I just want to make sure that if there are any issues with following the ADRG instructions, that we're able to, you mm -hmm. know, be ahead of those as well while I'm making these updates to the to the app and the underlying tables that are generated here. Um, I had not tested it. Um, okay. It's possible Heisu may have, um, but I don't know. Do you want to uh, weigh in, Heisu? I haven't um, tested it out. I think I'm going to start reviewing the app once you guys complete the submission. Okay. Yeah, we were kind of trying to... to um, follow the same model as before where sure. we okay. were approaching it kind of as we would um if it were an actual submission yep. where we wouldn't have any a priori information so i was doing more of the um a little bit more of this initial stuff okay yeah that's perfectly understandable Sounds good. I think guess I guess Eric from our side that once like we address the comment, then we can do the actual e gateway submission. Mm -hmm. Then after that maybe Paul and Hisu can do the testing. Yeah. So okay. Were the um so yeah, so I think you've addressed at least have a framework to address the concerns that were raised. Um and I assume you guys had no problems with you know, those seemed reasonable and appropriate for the circumstance. Yeah, just one clarification on the additional table um, is that mm -hmm. the remaining patients at the end of the like the primary treatment phase of the data. Um, is that what you're looking for? Um, yeah, it's kind of how the dropout proceeds you can kind of what's interesting um i don't normally say tables are interesting um <laughs> but there was an interesting um different 
what appears to be differential dropout. Um, so, um, that's the, I guess that's the kind of table that I think um, having a shiny app work with is is a little bit more um, where it's an exploratory analysis is of um, greater interest and utility than the pre-specifieds. Okay, so we could give it a new tab in the app. Maybe we call it either a disposition table or some similar to that effect, mm -hmm. and basically mimic in a in a somewhat more polished way the um the little screen grab that was in the email on the two doses in placebo at the mm -hmm. various time points okay mm -hmm. yeah that all sounds doable to us so i will make sure to um get get the updates in there and then i'll probably redeploy it on the on the hosted app so you all can take a look one more time and then we barring any additional comments we can go with the ETCD actual transfer of, of everything. Sounds, Sounds good. Great. Okay. Um, can we set a date for this? What, what do you think it'll take you in terms of time, um, Eric? I can try to address um, this in some of the downtime next week in between the conference, but I would like to maybe at the conservative estimates by end of next week at the as a deadline to try and get this sorted out maybe sooner well let, let's go with the one that doesn't cause you too much grief and <laughs> uh, and see where that takes us so um and you even next... want to give yeah yeah, mm -hmm. with with the conference going on and then Veterans Day, do you even want to give yourself two weeks? Well, I won't turn that down. Yeah, we can try two weeks just in case. Yep. I, I'm trying to be, um, yeah, because I th I think people will want to. I assume you want to participate in the conference and. Oh, I'm I'm heavily involved with especially the backstage stuff. Yeah. Right. So I was thinking that um, I've been telling folks my week next week is mostly taken up at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Me as well. Yep. So, so okay. okay. So maybe we try two weeks from today as a, as a, a conservative yeah, Friday, estimate. Friday the 18th. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. thinking the same since I, I, okay. I assume for Thanksgiving, people may take time off. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. All right. So if we do Friday the 18th when you're done, um, then what will we need um, from there on? We'll need to have people look at it. And so what what's when's our actual, you know, launch date then if if Eric is done on the 18th. People will need a few days to look at it, but that few days takes us right into Thanksgiving, right? So um, the following week. Um, I, I wonder, I think Eric says, I, I feel like the updates are pretty minor. Maybe like we can just have a small team like myself and Hong and Citra doing testing so that I feel like it's doable to even get the testing down by right. Friday if we carve out some time on Thursday. So maybe we can target that having even having the testing down by Friday. Do you think yeah, so? I mean, yeah. yeah, in totality, these are not major changes and Honestly, if not for the conference, it would be sooner that we could test it. But I think, yeah, we can test ourselves first to make sure it's meeting the the comments, and then that way it, it streamlines a couple of things on um, Paul and Husi's side as well. So does that mean the submission date is the eighteenth? Also, I'm thinking if we can target on eighteenth, maybe that's that would be good before people go go to the go to the the vacation. Yeah, huh? right. All right, so we won't set a hard date for when Eric's done, but assuming that you, you're all in communication and things are going well, 
Then 8, 11, 18 is the submission date. And that means that hey, Sue has to be around on the 18th. Does, does that look good for you? Yeah, that sounds great. Oh, good. Yeah, like Ming said, and we know with people's end of year schedules, it's it's going to get sporadic after Thanksgiving and obviously right. preparations for December as well. So it's in the interest of certainly us on on the developing side of this to get this out of the way before the, the holiday crunch hits. Right. And then the next meeting of this group is scheduled for December 2nd. So maybe there'll even be some results by then. Yeah, maybe so. Joe, do we want to put a placeholder on the 18th just to block everybody's time? So you mean we should uh, set a meeting for the 18th? For the, yeah, for the submission meeting, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I can do that. Um, what time should I put it? I mean, the same time as this would work for me. Um, okay. How about others? Yeah, it works for me as well. That works. All right, I, I have one um, kind of um, like overview question. So Paul, is there an easy way to uh, like, describe conceptually um, where you came down on drawing the line between a little bit of interactivity and like too much interactivity? Um, sure. So I, I think we can distinguish between exploratory analyses and inferential analyses. Huh. Okay. So the problem with inferential analyses is the um, usual problem with p-values, um, subgroups, and cherry picking. So that's one area. Um, and there's even, there's controversy within the agency, to be honest. Um, so the, um, direction we were told or um, we could say is that exploratory, uh, excuse me, interactive analyses were probably not the way to go. Um, for exploratory analyses, if you think about it, um, the Kaplan-Meier curve that we're suggesting is essentially a um, safety result rather than a primary efficacy. And there's a difference between exploring for safety and the um, inferential statistics. So, but a Cox model with an adjusted Kaplan-Meier curve, that would be inferential. Yeah, the overall pattern, if you look at it, um, is is the I would say is still exploratory. It's a, essentially it's an overall safety analysis. Okay. Um, we we do not actually quote a p value, or you guys do not actually quote a p value in that. Um, Kaplan Meyer plot, it's basically just confidence bands. Uh, admittedly, that is a form of inferential statistics, but I think we can put that in a slightly different class. Right. Because that's not exactly saying that, you know, the, the treatment groups are significantly different than placebo. It's just more of a visual representation, but we're not making claims on that particular plot. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah, and there have even been recent um, one of the recent ACs um, that was somewhat controversial 
um, for McKenna within the last couple weeks um, centered in part around um, the sponsor wanted to have a previous study which had a subgroup of one population to retain its indication and the advisory committee um, overruled that, which is a type of sub, I guess the point being that there was a type of subgroup analysis that the advisory committee said, no, we, we don't, we won't go along with that. So do you, do you think this, um, this kind of guidance that you're just giving on the interactivity, um, do you think that's going to stand for a long time or is this just a matter of it being assimilated into practice? Um, since it's consistent with the ASA statement on p-values, um, I think it's probably going to stand. Uh, um, at least. Go ahead. Or at least that's that's my interpretation. Um, again, that's me speaking, not the agency. Right, right. And um, also, that's only an opinion. Sorry, Ning. Sorry, <laughs> I'm I'm just curious. Then, like, I guess for the pre-specific sub subgroup analysis, like there is, I assume there are less controversy, right? So, do you think mm -hmm. like? Uh, like like putting kind of like making pre-specific subgroup analysis like easier like to navigate using an interactive tool will be a kind of like more tangible goal for this working group here. Yes, pre-specified. You know, if it's pre-specified, I I don't foresee a problem. Thank you. So basically, if we are thinking about a like more complicated, like maybe shiny use case in the future, as long as it's kind of still like aligned with what has been pre-specified in the SAP, then like it, it should be less controversial. But if it allow people to do things outside of what has been specified in SAP, then that could bring some concerns, right? Potentially, that or at least that would um, be of potential concern. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, it's interesting, some nuance here where, as in a typical submission, after all the, the data and the TFLs have been transferred, um, on the reviewer side uh, at your end, Paul, um, that it would be quite possible that the reviewer is going to slice and dice certain things to look at, you know, what's behind certain findings on to, for their own understanding. And obviously, no one, no one on the sponsor side is going to get in the way of that. That's all part of the process. But if we provide a tool that makes that part easier, that's a different story. It's, I mean, maybe I'm being a little too reaching here, but it does seem interesting nuance there where if um, the sponsor helps with making an app that makes that review easier, that's not, you know, that, that could be misleading. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into there's, it. There's, there's been controversy. Let's put it that way with, um, subgroup. There is a white paper that came out about subgroup analyses five years ago, and there yes. is a guidance in the works, is my understanding. Um, so I think I don't want to do anything that would suggest that we're endorsing anything contrary to what is a semi-official statement yeah that, that's good context to have and i'm pretty familiar with that guidance as some of the previous work i've done and in, in my day job that lily has been looking at optimal ways of doing subgroup analysis to make it a little more statistically robust so we've been mm -hmm. watching that space quite closely and i think most um most of the time reviewers will start with the SAP where I think things can sometimes differ is um, they also want to test model robustness. What are, how are robust are the assumptions, um, particularly if um, 
some things are marginal and or controversial. But I, I'd say the um, ASA statement on the p-values um, would be one that um, it's not an official FDA statement, but it, it does highlight best practices as endorsed by a professional organization. Is that white paper you referred to, Paul, is that available for everyone? I'm trying to, I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, I haven't looked at it in a number of years, to be honest. Okay. Well, it seems like um, we have some clear guidance. Uh, we're in good shape. The, the 18th looks reasonable, so, so this is all exciting. Um, do we have um, more discussion today? Uh, I see Joel is here. Joel, do you wanna say anything about what you're doing with um, Thomas? Sure, thanks, Joe. Appreciate the, the time. Yeah, just a quick update. Um, so for, for pilot three, as everyone knows from the proposal, this is just uh, somewhat of an extension of what uh, has been done for pilot one. Um, so yeah, we, we actually just had our team execution like kickoff meeting this past Wednesday. Um, and it, it was a really great kickoff meeting. We kind of got to meet um, all those who volunteered for, for this pilot. Um, and also kind of assessed to, to see which out of the, the team, the people who volunteered, who will actually be like part developer and, and really contributing hands-on versus those who may be in a supporting role or an observation role. So then we can kind of get a clear view of how to assign uh, the work. Um, so yeah, um, with that, we, we kind of just, you know, we, we had a, a really great introduction of, of everyone's background um, and where they see themselves uh, in working on this pilot. Um, about, let's see, we, we created a team roster here. There's roughly 13 people, um, including us, who have kind of wanted to be a part of this. Um, and with that, we, we discussed the kind of the scope and purpose uh, of our work uh, so that everyone was aligned there. Um, essentially, what, what we plan to do with Pilot 3 is try to resubmit everything that was kind of done for Pilot 1, but instead, the, the atom piece is, is the biggest difference in that we'll be using R to generate the atoms. Um, and Thomas, of course, is the, the product owner of the package Admiral, and everyone will be, um, we'll have like a quick workshop meeting or a um, follow-up meetings coming up just to kind of make sure everyone's aligned with how to use Admiral. Uh, and the, the dependent uh, packages that go along with it uh, in order to generate the atoms. Um, and the next steps with that is then to identify those people who wanna be assigned to the atoms that we need to, to generate. Uh, and in this case, the, the ones that we wanna focus on are only those that were used to generate the TLGs, TLFs um, that were done in pilot one. Um, and just doing a, a quick research of the those TLGs that were done in pilot one, roughly there are about five atoms that were used for those. Um, so for instance, um, ADSL, I think there was a, a cognitive analysis data set, ADAS, um, labs, and then there was a time to adverse event, um, TLF. So out of those, I think five data sets uh, will be then focused on to, to generate for this pilot three. Uh, so what we'll do is once we generate the atoms, we'll then do like a, a diff DF check um, 
against the CETUS pilot data, just to ensure that what we're developing using the Admiral package still matches up what was generated in the CETUS pilot data. Uh, so that'll be one of our validation steps. Um, and not doing any you know, uh, QC programming from scratch yet. Um, we just kind of want to focus on the, the, the first line programs first, and, and that is just being able to develop these, these atoms in R. Um, and then in addition to that, I, we felt like it also made sense to add the step of getting the programs that were used in pilot one to generate the TLGs and using the R atoms as source to, to re-input into those pilot one TLGs to ensure that the R atoms uh, still generate the same results as what was produced in pilot one and submitted. Um, so uh, we're, we're where I think we're, we're underway as far as what our, our workflow is gonna be. Um, and we're now just kind of setting up the, uh, and thanks to you, Joe, for giving us the access for the, uh, the repos to work in um, for this pilot three. So we're, we're starting to set issues for each of the tasks that need to be done and having people kind of self-assign themselves to the tasks they wanna work on. And uh, we'll see what else is open as far as tasks are, um, and then make sure to, to redistribute the, the work in case um, there's too many people wanting to do right. one thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, but of course, we'll, we'll discuss that in our, our follow-up um, follow breakaway sessions, meetings that we have set routinely. Well, thank you. That was a wonderfully coherent, detailed summary, uh, but are you, off the top of your head, are, are you planning to have put any of that on the website? Are you going to have um Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll work out a plan to to get that. Uh, sorry, this is kind of I'm still new to the the consortium here. So, but I'll I'll make sure to 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 work on getting it up there. And and a list of the you know who's involved would be helpful too. That, that'll absolutely yeah. And actually, some of our uh, some of our volunteers asked. Um, and I don't know, this this would be up to you. Um, we noted that there is this, this our consortium meeting on Fridays. Um, though Thomas, myself, and, and Lay, who's also a, a part of the pilot, we're on here. Some of them asked if they could actually join this meeting to, to listen in on. Um, is that okay with the group? Or otherwise, we could just keep Thomas, myself on, and we can relay any messages back to them. No, no, it's perfectly yeah. fine to have people listen in. Um, it's a little bit awkward. I have to hand do the invitation list, but I could do that. If you send me a list of emails, I could add them to the list um, by next time. So that, that would be fine. Okay, sounds good. Sorry to add work to you. I don't, no. I don't want you to have to do that. Oh, we All wanted right. it to be as inclusive as possible. Appreciate it. Um, Joel, I uh, have a question. I'm not sure if we have presented the whole package component uh, to FDA folks already for the pilot three, whether we want to you know, get some agreement on that uh, before we proceed. Like we may want to package from ECRF to SDTM and then, and then final TLG with the readable program. Have we done that yet? As far as the the discussion of of what we plan to deliver, right. I I don't believe we've done that yet. Um, though we may have highlighted it in the in the proposal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think again the the plan is to. My initial thought was just to to kind of resubmit, what was done for pilot one, um, in in that ECTD, uh, to the FDA where the only difference again is just the atoms being generated in R as the source rather than the CDIS pilot data. Um, and to my knowledge, I think for submission too, like we normally wouldn't, I guess since we're using the CDIS pilot data, the only raw data we have there is just the STTM. So not, right. oh, ECRF, yeah. do you mean the documentation? 
Maybe maybe、uh, just as like Pan, he's like actually on the call. Maybe just wonder from Pan, he saw just from Joel's description that if we resubmit pilot one but generating Adam using R, do you have any concerns or questions in terms of the scope here? Yeah. I don't think so. We we only pilot one really just dealt with、um, essentially analysis data sets, correct? Yeah. So are we ex sort of ex proposing to expand this to do SDTM and then traceability from SDTM to、um, kind of an an atom data set? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. Go ahead, Joel. No, yeah, thanks, Ning, for for posing that question to Paul.、Um, so yeah, Paul,、uh, essentially, pilot one was just the generation of of TLGs using R,、um, where then the source data set was just coming directly from the CDIS pilot data.、Uh, but in this pilot three case, yeah, it will be the the same package that was given to you for pilot one, but now the development of the atoms would be using R instead. And so the、um, we'll we'll most likely also give you readable code in R、uh, for these atom data sets as well for your review. Whereas in pilot one, that that wasn't given, right, Ning? Yeah. Um, if I may ask a question,、um, sure. we were talking at one state. This may I may be confused, so、um, set me straight.、Um, We were talking about pilot three being the container option. I assume this is not a container option. Yeah, we pushed containers back to pilot four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I missed last、uh, month's meeting.、Uh, so that could be it. So okay. So、um, that sounds reasonable.、Um, Being able to do the tracing and、um, starting from one place to actually develop,、um, I think, would certainly be helpful.、Um, quick question: Which packages are you thinking of using?、Um, yeah, I can. If I can share my screen,、um, should be okay. Sorry, my、uh, internet just went out, in and out. So, oh、uh, no way. Let's、uh, see. Medi okay, no you're, worries. Okay. So you're you're thinking of using、um, the tidyverse rather than data table. Right. Okay. Right. So Metacore, Admiral, Exporter, MetaTools, Tidyverse. Okay. Um. I think that'll be fine as long as we can, um, know which packages. Which version of R and which package versions would need to be set up a priori? Got it. Yeah, and that's. I think that was also part of our our kickoff to ensure that everyone was running on the same environment.、Um, so yeah, we'll we'll make sure to to provide those details、um, and then the submission. And I assume there won't be any issues with. Size of data sets, etc. I mean, this will be something that can be run on、um, a standard. It won't require any special computing facilities, I assume. No, yeah, we're hoping not.、Uh, we're we're planning just to kind of use the same same tools as was done in Pilot One. Okay.、Yeah. That sounds、yeah. reasonable. Thank you.
And Paul, so uh, I think the uh, reason we want to provide the traceability from ECRF to SDDM uh, and then to Adam is we think FDA might want to do some testing on our package. So if we have everything ready in a whole package, that it's easier for you guys to, you know, grab the data set and run. Uh, so mm -hmm. is a, this assumption correct? If you guys want to do some testing on the package or? We could, um, just to clarify a question I've got. Um, received um you guys were going to do the um xpt for format files for the data sets and then would presumably use haven to transfer and output or something like that for the traceability <clears throat> Never heard of Haven before. Oh, I'm very familiar with Haven <laughs> from necessity. Okay. Um, but it's basically the package by having Wickham to import SAS data sets directly into R. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um it's part of the tidyverse, I think. Okay. We can look into that. Um, That's just a question. Was, was more of a question um so we'll start with xpt um sdtms mm -hmm. xpt and finish with adam xpt um okay yeah i think that's yeah. the yeah that that's the plan yeah okay yeah um that sounds good there um How should I say? I don't, you guys can confirm. A couple of years ago, Hadley had expressed a concern with the output. Presumably that's been addressed and solved. I'll have to take a look at the issue tracker for Haven. It's been a little bit, but um, Haven, for those that you know, may not be aware, is actually wrapping a C library um, by someone else to help in essence, try to reverse engineer the SAS 7B, that format to get into R. And I know there have been some esoteric issues with some use cases, and I think there's been some active development on the C library side of things to shore some of that up, but I, I definitely would like to pursue that further because honestly, that's one of the biggest okay. pain points for us, even internally, is to deal with situations where Haven doesn't work by default on some of these that's that's another story for another day but yeah. Yeah, i'm trying to keep close to the vest on that yeah, my intent okay. was that xpt is okay but assess 7b dev is causing problem that's my impression but I have yeah a most of the issues that are identified are on the SAS 7b dev format i think xpt has okay. been a solved problem for quite a bit now yeah okay yeah, I'm looking um, at the um, issues now, and it's still open on the SAS 7B debt. That won't be an issue on our end, I don't believe. So that then just having delivering the, the Adam CU and XBT. Um, would be sufficient. Um, let's see. I guess I want to say yes, but I think we we want to um, we'd want to see a, a written proposal. Yeah, I think. Uh, why don't you guys submit a written proposal so that we can review more thoroughly and then give you guys any feedback or concern or thoughts. Yeah, that would be the best way to lock things down. So let's make sure at the appropriate level of detail, everybody understands what's gonna happen. And it sounds good. Um, so essentially this is then a proposal on just how to allow once the data gets to you, Paul, 
um, and hey Sue, just how then you'd be able to unpack the package and then be able to run on your end. Okay. Okay. Am I understanding great. that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got it. Yeah, in that case, yeah, we'll go back to the team and then um, assess how those steps would, would play out and then ensure that in the proposal we we provide some not too many details, but just some instruction on on the high level overview of, of how those steps would look like. So thanks for the feedback. Do you think you could have that um, by the 12, what's it, the 12 one meeting? It would be nice to go out of the year with. Or if not, I and mean, January wouldn't be so bad either, but we should have a date for that proposal. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, four weeks. Um, yeah, we can shoot for that. I think that's a lot of time for that. Thanks, Joe. Sure. Did that answer your question, Lee? Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Paul. Uh, can I take this opportunity to ask a question? Um, it's, it's kind of different from pilot three uh, purpose, but in general, I'm not sure uh, what's FDA's point of view to have a filing with, you know, data set created by SAS, but uh, TLGs uh, created by R. Is that a possible um, is, is there any possibility we accept this mixed, you know, package filing? Or it depends on, you know, really particular filing uh, wow. team? Um, to some extent, it will depend on the filing team, but um, officially FDA is software agnostic. Um, there, the reality is individual reviewers may do some of what you have just outlined. Um, and in fact, um, we have had analyses done in SAS and then the graphs for the label that actually went out were done in R or were made in R I should say so there are actual examples from our end of those types of things and actually my understanding is that if you were to open the package insert you would see some of those graphs So obviously there's there's lots of ways to mix and match multiple languages. I mean, I mean, different cutoff points. Is there any particular like boundary line that, that provides um, concerns about traceability? So, you, you know, when you have the data generated one way and then analysis on the other, you have to really be sure that you're you're doing the data translation right, which I suppose is not that hard, but conceptually, are, are there any difficulties? Um, I think we do ask that the um, sponsors use relatively standardized software that we can follow and is available. Um, Like something like Haven would fit that. Um. Right. Um, how should I say? Um, one of my colleagues once made fun of a sponsor saying they were so unaware they tried to use Excel. Um, 
yeah okay so I, i'm not saying i'm the one who said that <laughs> but um, on the other hand, our, our colleagues in CDRH do not require, um, they will accept Excel um, submissions in some cases because they're dealing with a much wider range of companies and products than, say, we do on the drug side. So I would say, most standardized um, statistical software tools could be employed. Uh, we would prefer not to have a whole collage of tools just because it makes it more challenging to trace. Um, but um, I, th I think definitely if someone were to use an office productivity tool rather than a statistical tool, we would have some concerns. Especially if that uh, data file has a date column in it or, or uh, a column that gets transferred to dates as we've seen in the past. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding of course. Right. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, the, the, that is the one case where I know of someone actually um, saying um, something along those lines of, of saying it was not something that was traceable. I think in general, um, we would want something that's traceable, which typically means using a scripted language as opposed to a GUI. Okay, we're coming up on 10 minutes to the hour. Does anybody else have a, an update they'd like to um, provide? Just an update. Uh, he's one that myself will present in the RA Pharma next week about the pilot one. Yeah. Most excellent. I hope there are thousands of people there. <laughs> um, last I heard, there are over fifteen hundred registered. So we'll wow. see how you know how much translates to showing up. But if last year's any indication, we're going to have a very good turnout to this year's event. When, when is your talk, Ning? What time? It's Wednesday, right? Here. I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, it is Wednesday, I think, 11. Yeah, that's correct. Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Yep. All right, we had a, um, a really thorough discussion today. We have lots of action items and we're getting so ever so close to this pilot two submission. It looks like it's really gonna happen and it would be nice to sit around Thanksgiving dinner and knowing that it was done. So <laughs> let's see if we can do that. Um, I was checking my notes uh, for pilot one hour submission day was uh, November 22nd. <laughs> well, there you go. All <laughs> right. <laughs> so we have some tradition to, to yep. uh, adhere Somewhat to. Somewhat unplanned tradition, but you know, <laughs> those things line up serendipitously. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Joel, you, you, you know when um, pilot three is going to be then. So. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we'll keep we'll keep the tradition going, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully right. sooner. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, any, everyone. And unless there's anything else, let's um, let's get out five minutes early. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.